Richland. Monarch season is in full effect here in Michigan, and this season especially, we're talking a lot about milkweed. And also it's starting to rain, but I really gotta film today, so I hope you can tolerate the rain. Hopefully it won't get too loud. It cannot be overstated that the number one way to help out the monarch butterfly populations of North America is by restoring their habitat. And that really means essentially milkweed and other nectar producing flowering plants. But definitely big time milkweed. Now also, as more and more people are becoming aware of the plight of the monarch and wanting to help out, a lot of people are just ready to passionately dive right in. And of course, that passion is exciting, encouraging, and respected. But if we dive in too deep before we're actually ready for it, this can cause some complications. And really, that can be a lot of the topics involved in raising monarchs. There's a lot of complexity to it at times. Whether we're talking about growing milkweed, having enough food for caterpillars, how to test for parasites and diseases, sanitation, it's complicated. It's definitely a learning process. One such topic that this video is going to try to help you troubleshoot involves diving into where you are rearing monarchs and you're finding that actually your food supply, you may be underestimated how much these guys eat. In other words, food's running short. Well, to help this out and try to help avoid and prevent this kind of situation, I thought it might be useful for some to just see how I think about the milkweed that I have available to me, what categories I put it in, and how I decide to use it. I don't know if you've thought this way about milkweed before. Maybe this can help, or at least give you food for thought. Started really right now. And as always, I am not telling you, here's what you should be doing. I'm telling you, here's what I do. I'm just showing you, here's what I do. Here's how I think about it, and if you can get some help from that, then cool. But when it comes to milkweed, I typically think about milkweed in three categories. What I would call local milkweed, home milkweed, and new milkweed. So let's describe to you all three categories and what I use them for, and hopefully that can inspire either yourself if you're just getting into this, or some others you might know who could use this information. Let's check out some local milkweed. Category number one, local milkweed. As discussed in a lot of previous videos, Truly, before you start taking in any wild sourced eggs or caterpillars to care for them, it is absolutely your responsibility to make sure that you've got enough food supply to where you'll be able to raise them all the way. And thus, I can't stress enough how important it is to really treat this as a first priority. Find out where is their milkweed growing naturally in your location nearby. So to be clear, when we say local milkweed, we're talking about, of course, you know, what's growing out in nature in the woods and fields but also your local recreation areas, local public parks. Having a good idea of what milkweed is already out there can help you so much. Having some really good firm knowledge as to about how much milkweed is already at your disposal can help you gauge how many monarchs are you gonna be able to raise if you're first starting out with this. For me and for my operation, the way I think about local milkweed is that number one, it's a place to find eggs, and number two, it's a food source for the caterpillars that I'm raising. Over the years, the the monarchs that you've seen me rear, I would say probably about half of them by now have come from home milkweed plants, but the other half have come from milkweed just like this, right along this trail. So local milkweed, definitely a great source to find eggs out there in nature. But needless to say, the other thing that this can definitely provide is food. And so when I'm out looking for new eggs, I'm also collecting enough leaves to where I've got food source for whatever caterpillars I'm rearing at home and it kind of doubles in fact you find an egg on a leaf well you can take that leaf home you've got the egg that you can cut a little portion out of that leaf and the rest of the leaf is food so really local milkweed that's where i'm getting my food source for my caterpillars i'm not actually using home plants to do that we'll talk about that in a second now when it comes to using these plants as a food source let's not forget the number one reason why the monarch numbers are declining in north america is due to loss of habitat the last thing that we'd want to do is be actually harming the habitat in our effort to try to help rear monarchs. So that's why I have a pretty strict rule for myself. I'm not going to ever take more than two leaves off of milkweed plants such as this. That way it's not severely harming the plant. It can continue on, produce great seeds, low impact. And then after eggs in a food source, of course, definitely what this is a great resource for is seeds, especially when you're first starting out and you might not have plants at home. So knowing where your local milkweed sources are, what's growing out there in nature, can really help you get started and get off on the right foot. And also, if this is growing already locally nearby you, well, it's a pretty good chance then that this is likely a species of milkweed that is native to your region. 
Now let's say though you try to do this, find some local milkweed in your area what's naturally growing and you can't find any. Well you just found a really great way to help them out, didn't you? You can be the one who helps establish then some actual local native milkweed in your region. Giving the monarchs some options that otherwise they apparently seem to not have in your area. All right, it's getting really hot. It already is hot. Uh, let's go check out the home milkweed. Category number two, home milkweed. Just as the name implies, this is milkweed that has established itself on your home turf. And when I say established, that means the root system has been established. This is milkweed that has taken root and it comes back each season. Now, as just discussed, it is local milkweed, natural milkweed that's out there. That's usually where I'm getting the leaves for my food source for my caterpillars. So what do I use all of this for? My primary reason is seeds. Now with common milkweed, Asclepias syriaca, as you see here and in all my videos, these plants, they start flowering after approximately three years. I think a plant maybe did it at two years, but again, it's about three years and you're gonna see some flowering. If the plant is flowering, well that means it's mature enough now to where it's going to be producing seed pods and thus seeds. So for me, really, while yes, uh, occasional leaf can be used in a pinch as far as if food's running low or maybe instead of going out to get some leaves there's a thunderstorm and I don't feel like jogging that day, yep, I might have a backup food source here, but it's primarily for seeds that I have these home growth plants. And certainly, while I'm looking at them and checking them out, I might also find some eggs from time to time. And furthermore, since I know that these milkweed plants would not be here if I hadn't planted them, well then that makes me feel a lot more comfortable about collecting entire seed pods from them and not reducing how many seeds are being distributed out there in nature if I was getting a lot of seed pods from natural local milkweed. Now just because I say that I don't use my home milkweed for a food source for my caterpillars, I'm not saying that's wrong if you do. I've had a few years to kind of get this stuff established. Furthermore, I've got plenty of local milkweed in my area. And certainly, it hopefully goes without saying, by having this milkweed here, this is giving female monarchs just another option as to where to lay their eggs. So from time to time when I'm checking the plants, uh, this can also be a nice, easy egg source. But something to think about, I've had a few years to certainly establish plenty here. You might be dealing with a home established amount of milkweed that's maybe just a, a few plants this year. And so I can't stress enough why finding local extra milkweed out there in nature is so important as a first step. Because we're trying to avoid and troubleshoot certain situations. Someone who's kind of gotten a feel for this over the years, they can easily gauge how many monarchs are they taking care of, how much food do they have at their disposal. However, I can't tell you how many times I've heard a comment that kind of goes along the lines of, Hey, Lund, I got like six plants at home, and a monarch came by the other day, laid a few eggs, and now I've got 16 caterpillars all in the third instar, and we're about to run out of food in like two days. Help. From my computer here in Michigan, there's not really much I can do to help that situation out. So please, really take that into consideration when you are planning out how many monarchs you're actually going to take in from nature and try to rear. You do not need to collect every single egg, and in fact, be conservative in your estimate as to how much you can actually handle. Now just as an aside to try to help if you get into that kind of a pinch, last year I made a video about artificial milkweed diets. Now it's artificial, but that just really means that the mixture that you add some water to to mix up, it's made in a lab, but it's from primarily dried out milkweed. Kind of like the difference between like homemade oatmeal and instant oatmeal. And while still dry, it has a very long shelf life to where you can kind of hang on to a, an amount of it, and then if you're in the pinch, it's there for you if you need it. You can check out that video from last year for more details. It's in the comment section below. But I digress. Let's keep going. On to the next category. Category number three, new milkweed. This would be any milkweed that you're sprouting, that you're growing, that is not yet in category number one or two. It's the stuff that maybe you're sprouting from seeds, you're germinating, you're nurturing it, loving it. No real severe explanations needed here. These are just the, the new milkweed plants that you're sprouting for whatever reason. Whether it's to try to start or continue on or establish some more at your home, or if it's to try to get some more local milkweed established, or maybe it's even something that you're going to use as a gift for others to get them started. And plenty are still growing milkweed, uh, even if they have it established at their home and they've got plenty of milkweed supplies, because let's face it, if you're trying to get some others interested or if they've inquired about it, you know, handing them some seeds can definitely be a, a way to get plenty involved, but if you can hand them a plant that's already made it through those hurdles, you'll get a lot more buy-in. A lot more people will be interested in getting it started. All right, so I hope this information in some way could help you out, this walkthrough as far as how I look at milkweed and how I'm using it, so that way I'm never really running short on food and I've got what I need in order to, well, help spread the word and 
perhaps infect and recruit others into wanting to plant more milkweed and help out the monarchs. If in watching this video you are just starting to get into this, then I hope this information is helpful. And if you're a seasoned veteran, well maybe you know somebody else who's getting into this and you can pass this information along to them. Questions? Comments? Cool things to celebrate? We always love them down there in the comments section, of course. I'm doing my best to keep up with them, but I also want to give just a special little thank you and shout out to those who have been helping to answer certain questions that I have not been able to get to. Y'all rule, and it's very much appreciated. I'm Rich Lund, just a guy trying to help out the monarchs and a guy trying to plant a whole lot of milkweed. And I appreciate you very much for checking this out. I'll see you next time. I've got some milkweed to literally go plant right now. See ya.